We have gathered here, brothers and sisters, because of Christ. That is the purpose that we have all traveled here. Some of you traveled a long distance to be here, and it's because of Christ. You've come to hear about Jesus Christ. The world, they have all kinds of things that they're talking about, spinning their wheels. You know what I'm talking about, what spinning their wheels is. Spinning their wheels in the mud, spinning their wheels in the ice, well, however you want to call it, spinning their wheels. They're not going anywhere, using a lot of effort and energy, but going nowhere. But we're going somewhere, brethren. We're preparing to be in glory with our Father in heaven because of Jesus Christ. And without him, this isn't going to happen. None of this. Is, see, he's the king. He is the king. He's not just given a name that he can't back up, but he is given a name because he is the king. That comes with power. And we, this, what God is doing, working out this in his great wisdom, it takes power. It can't be done without power. Ephesians 1, I'm going to start here, 19, I'm going to read 20. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which is wrought which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And now here's my sermon, 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, because it is in this world, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Amen. So you see, he is ruling now in this world. See, it may not look like that, okay? You may think the way people are acting that, that Jesus Christ is not the king because they shake their fists, because they say slanderous things about our God. But see, that he is the king. He doesn't need to have, you know, have you ever had someone who that you really care about and somebody talk bad about? Doesn't that just stir you up, especially when you know it's a lie? Especially when you know it's wrong. Now, I'm this way about Jesus Christ. When I hear people talking false about him, it just makes me mad. But see, I don't really have any power to do anything about it, really. But I know who does have power, the king, Jesus Christ. Why doesn't he do anything about it? See, we, we get all worked out. We can't do anything about it. But see, he's the king. There's going to come a time. It's in his time. See, he's in control. He doesn't get all excited like men do because he's in control. See, when he's ready, he's going to come back and the mouths of men are going to be shut and they can't do anything about it. But see, now we are preparing for that day. We are preparing our hearts and souls and our minds. See, Satan, he, he's got nothing. All he can do, all he can do right now is try to drive our minds away down to the gutter where he can do some work. He's, that's what he does. He drags your mind away. But see, he can't do nothing when our minds are set on things above. That's what we're doing in this refreshing waters renewal. We're setting our minds above where Satan can't do anything with us. He can't, he can't have his work. He can't have his work when we got our minds above and we're seeing Christ clearly. When we see him for who he really is, that he is far above all. That nothing can touch Christ. He's up in the heavenlies. He's on the right hand. The right hand, as we've already been talking about this, this morning, the right hand is where the work's being done. 
and he can't be touched. See, when, the, when brothers and sisters can see that, that will stir you up. They give you this confidence. This confidence that Satan can't do anything. Now, there are some who say, well, we're all just sinners. You know, just like, no, we're not. See, in Christ Jesus, we are victorious. We're no longer sinners. We're no longer slaves to sin. The reason people are sinning is because they're not in Christ. You're not going to be sinning in Christ. Christ doesn't tell the woman to, well, go and sin no more because she, can, she, can't, she can't help and sin anymore. He says that because she can go and sin no more. We have victory in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's over all. See, he is over all. Christ has, he's been put in the spotlight because he, this is where he belongs. See, he hasn't been put in the spotlight just because, like this is what happens here with men. Men will put somebody up in the spotlight. What? He didn't do anything to deserve that way. Why is that person up in the spotlight? But that isn't the way it is with Christ. He's been put up in the spotlight by God because he deserves it. Because he is overall. Some, see, this is what I'm talking about when I, when I get agitated by today the way people look at Christ. People talk about Christ like as if he is your personal genie. That he is like in your back pocket and anytime you're ready to use him, you just pull it out and, and as long as you say, you say this little prayer and then you end it with, in Jesus' name, it's all going to happen for you. That's not the way it works. We are with him. He's not with us. He is, he is the king. He's the one that's sitting up in heavenly places high above all. We're following him. He's not following us. Let's not get this backwards, brethren. Let's see Christ for who he really is. The king, the Lord of lords. He's not our special little puppet. He's not here to do our good, our whatever we desire. We're here for him. He didn't, there isn't a, a, a special plan for you and a special plan for you and a special plan for you. We are one body in Christ. Now, there are different members, but the same body. We don't have different missions. We don't have different plans for individuals. We have one plan, and Christ is overall. Amen. This is the way it works. As long as we can see that, this will help you be victorious. Because the fact is, we are under attack daily. There is what, if, someone, if you are sitting back relaxing because you were saved 30 years ago and you haven't done anything since then, I dare to say I question where you are today. Because daily we are under attack. Daily we are told to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. We cannot allow half-heartedness and slothfulness creep into our lives. Because when that happens, we will be overcome. We do have victory, but it's in Christ. It's not a sleeping bed. Rise up, O oh man of God. Have done with lesser things. Let's get to work. Amen. Let's not be slothful about this. Let's be serious. Let's have done with the childish things and get, get a hold of what God has for us. Amen. The world tells you after so long, hey, take it easy. Relax. That's, just take it easy. Why? So the devil can run right over you? Have done, do whatever he wants with you? Because that's what's going to happen. If you think while you're relaxing, Satan's going to take a, a vacation, you're wrong. He's not on vacation. He's not going to be slothful. He's going to continue his attack on God's people. And especially if you call yourself a Christian. 
if you have the name of Jesus Christ attached to you, you better be vigilant because you also have a target on you. And I'm not saying this to get people scared. I'm saying this to say, you better be with Jesus if you say you're with Jesus. Because if you say you're with Jesus and you're living like hell all through the week, you're in trouble. You can't come to church on Sunday and think that that's going to be enough to hold you into eternity. We got to live for Christ daily. Because that's where the power is. That's where the victory is with Jesus Christ. That's where you overcome the evil one. This, this idea that you can give your mind to the world, Paul talked about this when he's talking about putting on the armor of God. He said that we must have on the helmet of salvation. Ephesians 6, 17. Why did he say that? Because the mind is going to be attacked by the evil one. He's going to bring you down and make you think, he will. He'll make you think that Jesus Christ is not the king of kings. That people in the world are in control. But brethren, see this is where we, as we can see this clearly, we don't get all caught up into the things of the world. When we see things, and Brother Gene brought this up earlier, when he was talking about when he was uh, younger, the Soviet Union. Now today we have other things that are, are popping up, looking as if they are empowering, but we know that God, he sets people up and he takes them down. There's a reason why he had Pharaoh in place when he did. There's a reason why he had Rome in place when he did, and it was for his purpose. See, this is how the king works. He doesn't have to ask anybody, you think, can, we, can I do this? Do you? No, not, that, not the king. See, the king doesn't ask for what should be done. The king does it. If Satan can get you to think of things that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, he knows it won't be long that you'll become weak and he'll run right over you. But here's the key. If a saint can focus on the truth that Jesus is at this present time at the right hand of in heavenly places, and that he is far above all principality and power and might and dominion. If a saint can get a hold of that, what can, Satan, what can Satan do to them? What can he do to a saint that can see this? They will be overcomers. We don't need to run to the, the bookstore and, and get a, a help book on how to overcome. We have the overcomer to run to. See, there are people today, they'll, they'll be more than happy to take your money and say, listen, look, I know what your problem is. Here, read this book. Read, take this. I'll help and just give me your money and I'll help you. We don't need to give our money to people like this, peddlers. We have the king that we can go to. Christ is exalted. Why do God's people look to other places? Why do they run around? It's because they're not seeing Christ for who he is. We don't have any other place to go to but to Christ Jesus. He's got the power. He's got the answers. Remember when they all left him and Jesus said, Will you go to? Where are we going to go? You're the one that has life, the answers to life. You're the one that has everything. Everything is all is under you. Where should we go? So growth is a daily process, and we know where to go for that growth. Christ, Jesus, it doesn't happen all at once, but it must be maintained. What God gives us, if we don't maintain it, if we don't continue daily to grow, and if wherever you're at, if you don't have someone that's helping you to grow, either get somewhere 
or find somebody that knows what they're talking about to help you. I know this to be true. When I first became a believer in Christ Jesus, the first thing I knew was I needed to be around people who had the truth. I was living down in Florida. I was 19 years old, and I wanted the truth. And the, today, the Lord has surrounded me with godly men and women who know the truth, who proclaim the truth. So I know this to be true. If somebody wants to know the truth, the Lord will send someone to be with them. Tell them, Brother Ricky. He will send somebody if you want it. How bad do you want it? That's the question. Because if you want it bad enough, if you want Christ bad enough, he will not leave you hungry. He will not leave you thirsty. I know this to be true. It is God who gives the understanding to all who want it. It doesn't come from it doesn't come to somebody who doesn't want it. If you want it, the king has what you need. Someone who loves the world more than God will not be blessed to see this truth. You can't love the world and have understanding open to you. You can't be blind and get to glory. But Jesus Christ can open your eyes if you want it. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is real? But there's a lot of people that believe that Jesus Christ is real. The demons believe that he is real. They know he's real. You've got to be able to see him for who he really is. There's a lot of false teaching going around about Jesus. Who Jesus is, what he is. And I have talked to people who said they're, they're born again. They believe in Jesus Christ, they believe is real, and they're off in the world. What has happened there? Someone has, has fed them a false Jesus. Not a real Jesus. The, the Jesus we're talking about is the King of Kings, and he's over all. He is the Jesus that's not making you happy in this world. He's making preparation for you to get out of this world, Amen. to be with him where he is in glory. We don't want to take this for granted, brethren. I know you don't. That's why you're here today. If you took this for granted, you wouldn't even be here. But we can't take this for granted. We can't take for granted the fact that he has been raised up. He, the, God has set him on, the, on his own right hand. What does that mean, he set him? He now has his place on the throne. Nothing can change that. Everything is under Christ. He sent him means that everything is under him. That it means that he is working now. It means that he is in control now. No matter what it looks like at times, he is in control. That's what set him means. No matter what people say or do, he is on the throne right now. No matter how many people shake their fist at the Lord and says, eh, I don't care what you say. You're a hater if you don't like me for being immoral. You, you can't hate. It doesn't matter what people in the world say. I'm, I'm saying this for me because I get upset when I hear this, that we have to accept people because they're immoral. When God says this is wrong, but people say, no, we don't care what God says is right. The king says it's wrong. And what he says goes. Amen. He is in control. Moral decline, there is no excuse for it. Amen. Some that are blind say things like, why does God let this happen? You just fill in the blank. But if you can see it rightly, Jesus Christ is in control and he's allowing his saints to rise up in the midst of this moral decline. 
so that you know who belongs to him. Amen. You got the wheat and the chaff, and when they start to grow up, you start to see what they really are. Because God, he knows the outcome. He knows how to achieve the outcome that he wants. It's not the outcome that men want. That's not even the point. It's what the outcome that he's looking for. He's the king. We need to know that Christ is on the throne at this very moment. It's his plan that's in motion. Everything else, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At the end, it's all going to be done. It's what the Lord is doing that matters. For the plan to work, it must come with power. And this is what the throne has, is power. It may be a little hard to understand if you look at Today, when the leaders that we have today, they're, you know, they're kind of weak. They can't really do anything. But see, we're talking about a king, a real king, who when he says something, I'm going to have to go back a little bit to be able to look at what a king does. But remember in Daniel 16, 16 um, through 24, when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, remember how the king um, got the board members together? No. There was no board members there was no going to a group of men asking. The king said, all right, throw him into the lion's den. Then remember, we know how, what happened. Then he came back, and the mouths of the lions were shut by the angels. And the king says, all right, now you men who said, uh, talking about Daniel, you and your family and your children, now you go into the lions. Could you imagine that being done today? No, you got to first. You got to go to Congress, and then you got to go to this group of people and that group of keep people. My point is, when a king says something, it's done. There is, the king doesn't have to ask; it's just done, and there's no disputing it. You notice when the king said it, there was no disputing; it was just done. I use that example because this is the way Jesus Christ, how He works. See. Men may say things, but it doesn't matter what men say. What matters is what the king says. The king calls the shots. Nothing is done without his okay, his working. We are not fully there yet, brethren, but we will be. Nothing can stop it. As long as we continue to grow and mature in Christ Jesus, as long as we keep our focus, keep ourselves away from the world and close to Christ, nothing can stop this. Amen. What we need to under understand is who's in control. Paul talked about the mercy of God, that he quickened us together with Christ made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Jesus, Ephesians 2, 5 through 6. See, if this can be seen right, this is a mercy from God. Amen. This is, because I mean, what did you have to do with this before you were born? What could you do about your sins? God chose you. God called you. How did you get here where you are at today? How did you make it from where you were before to the time you are now wanting to hear the truth, taking a whole week off of vacation to spend time with brethren that all we want to do is talk about Christ Jesus? How did you get to this point? It's because the king's in charge. Because the king, you didn't get here by chance. You didn't get here, but I just happened to come by this church today because it was something I wanted to do. Yes, you did want to do it. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want to do it. But it's because the king is in charge. That's why. Amen. God made us. Christ is now on the throne. 
because of God. This is a work that God is presently doing with power. See, we're too weak, brethren. We got to admit something. We're too weak to be able to do this. We're, we're not even smart enough to put this together. We can't think this out for ourselves. It's God who gave this to us. It's God who opened this, opened this up to us. He's the one who enlightened us. He's the one that gave sight to the blind. We were blind, Amen. but now we can see. Amen. We couldn't do this on our own. This shows the loving kindness of our God. Amen. See, remember the, the, the ones with the, the talents? The one that had five, he doubled it. The one who had two, doubled it. The one that had one, he dug a hole and said, oh, well, I know my master's hard. He's, he's, he's a mean man. It's not very nice. That's not what the ones who doubled there said. They didn't say that. They saw the master as a good master. See, those who who can see this rightly, see God as a good God. Merciful God. That is why it's so horrendous for people to question God. Because God knows what he's doing. We follow and obey. Not doesn't matter what the world says. Done with the world. It's what God says that matters. We follow him. God is perfect in all his ways. Christ is executing the will of the Father. He's doing what God has given him to do. Perfectly. From heavenly places this take you, you know unbelief is a terrible thing see we come together to stir one another up in our most holy faith because unbelief is the worst thing remember Jesus at one point he did not many mighty works because of unbelief Matthew thirteen fifty eight. But brethren, that's why we're here. To stir one another up so that we can see this more clearly. So that our faith can grow and see Christ. You think Christ can do this without you? The, yeah, he can do this, but my point is, that's not what he's doing. He's working within his saints. For the saints to drop the ball, this is a, a, a bad thing. He's given us a work to do. And after all he's done, and to see him, that he has given all power to do all things, for us to drop the ball, that's bad. We've got to pick up the pace. He's working, and we should be too. We are still here, but because of Christ working on our behalf, he is bringing us to glory. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 2.10. See, he's got to work for us to do too. We can't be sent by idly. We've got a work to do. Christ is there in high places making himself available to us. See, we can come to him. We can come to him for strength and power to to do what he has given us to do. By whom we also, we have this access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, Romans 5, 2. What are we rejoicing about? We're rejoicing that Jesus Christ is in control. We're rejoicing that he's working this out and he's bringing many sons to glory. Nothing can stop this, brethren. What he is doing cannot be stopped. It doesn't matter if people agree with it or not. 
what he is doing will continue. We don't get to vote on this. See, you don't, in this country that we live in, they, they take a vote for everything. It's even penetrated the churches, brethren. They can't lay carpet without voting on it. But see, with Jesus Christ, there is no vote. He says it, and it's done. Amen. Jesus is over all. When a saint can see this, what can pull a saint away? It's because somebody's lost, lost sight of Christ Jesus. That's why they've been pulled away so easily. I, we don't need a bunch of excuses. People don't need to excuse people for why they go back into the pit. It's because they've lost sight of Christ Jesus. Something is taking their attention. So we look to Christ, who is over all, because Christ is over all and above all. It, is, it just makes more sense. You look around the world and you just scratch your head and say, why? That's because they haven't seen Christ for who he really is. Why is everything turned upside down? Because they have lost sight of Christ. We don't need to make excuses. That's the way it is. Most, most things we really can't control. But Christ Jesus is in control. If we do not look to Christ, we will be looking at something. Where do you have your eyes fixed if it's not on Christ? See, that's the way it is, really. If you're, you're either looking to Christ daily or you got your eyes wandering someplace else. Spiritual progress, advancement, in the faith, it's all because you've been looking at Christ. We, don't, we know when someone's growing and they're excelling, we know where that comes from. They've been spending time with Christ. Because that's where growth, growth comes from. We must be able to see Christ and that he is over all if we are to achieve the prize. See, we have a prize before us. And we want to be like Paul, not to let go of it. To grab a hold and not let anything distract us. Not let anything, anybody, to turn our eyes from Christ Jesus. We can't just live for the day. We have to live for the future. To be with him in glory. In Christ we have this confidence that we will overcome and that we will be victorious knowing that we are called to an inheritance, a blessing, 1 Peter 3, 9. If we can't see Christ is overall, it's not even possible for us to, be, to make it all the way. It's not even possible for us to receive the blessing. But because of Christ Jesus, we have an inheritance, incorruptible, and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter 1 4. God's done this, brother. He has done this through his son, Jesus Christ. And he has made us a part of it. So we rejoice. We rejoice in knowing that the victory is ours in Christ Jesus. Thank you, brother.